Yes. Uh, do I get to try the food on Chopped? Um, the problem with that question is the way you phrased it, the way you said, do I get to? <laughs> uh, I don't, if you haven't seen uh, our show, Chopped is a, basically a culinary game show where four chefs come in, we give them, there are three rounds, appetizer, entree, and dessert. Each round comes with a basket of mystery ingredients that really don't go together very well. And you have either 20 minutes or 30 minutes, depending on what round it is, to come up with something. Uh, it's unbelievably hard. And because of that, the food is not always good. And you can usually tell. But sometimes it is good. And when somebody, are there any chefs in the crowd? I mean, there's one. You know, it's uh, when somebody can accomplish a delicious dish under those conditions, it's special. It's really cool uh, it's, and exciting. And um, Mark, one of our judges, Mark Murphy and Amanda Freitag, are very nice to save me a bite when something turns out really well. And then ultimately, the winner of the show gets, gets $10,000, and, and it's all wrapped up in a neat little bow. You don't have to watch 15 episodes to, to, to get the payoff which I think is one of the nice things about it. This, uh, uh, today's, this, today's mystery ingredient? Why? Okay, so this is nothing crazy uh, or, or new, but it's, it's really almost more of an attitude about a room temperature salad to serve with your barbecue that, can, that, that I make with whatever happens to be sitting around. In this case, what's sitting around is black beans, just from a can, that have been drained and rinsed, because I don't like the liquid that comes with these guys. Uh, black beans, any bean really, is, is a terrific product. They are, I find them delicious. They're super cheap, they're packed full of protein, great way to sort of stretch your budget, uh, if, that, if that's an issue, which for most of us it is. Um, beans, they're a good thing. Beans, it's what's for dinner. It's always weird these are somebody else's knives. Okay, I like a red onion. One of my colleagues on shop is famous for not liking red onions, Scott. I uh, have had to explain Scott many times to people. It's not that he doesn't like red onions, it's that he wants them to be cooked. But we're going to, and, and, or uh, soaked in ice water for a little while. You know, onions, straight up raw onions, very assertive, kind of kills your palate, kind of hot. Uh, we don't need to worry about that in this recipe because I'm going to make a vinaigrette. So in effect, the onion will be marinated in vinegar and Scott will be satisfied. So you take your onion, cut it in half, you allow the, allow the layers of the onion to, to work for you, cut up against that texture and then just chop these guys up, use as little or as much as you want. Sorry? Uh-oh, you're grading me? Tough crowd. <clears throat> All right, take your, your corn. These, these, these ears of corn have had about a minute in the microwave, a piece. Just get a little bit of a cook on them, not too much. You guys grow corn up here, or is it too far north? So it's just now really getting good. I kind of like, you know, I love corn on the cob as much as anybody else, but I, when I'm having the people over, I kind of like to cut it off just to make it a little easier for them. Okay. You're looking to have a leg. Hey, why don't you guys open a Wegmans in Brooklyn? Our, 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 our grocery stores are kind of lousy. They're getting better. But they've got a ways to go. Um, three ears of, I've already chopped the celery. Three ears of celery chopped up. I like to chop the leaves too. One of the things grocery stores do to drive me crazy is to get rid of the leaves on celery. Celery leaves have a lot of flavor. Um, this batch of celery has some leaves on it, which is nice. Get this, get this fly attracting material out of here. Flies did corn, I guess. Who knew? And then, so it's whatever you got, or whatever you're growing, that, that sounds nice. Uh, here we have some wax beans that I've cut into 
one inch lengths, some carrot, some tomato, some jalapeno, and nice big chunks that are going to really surprise somebody when they bite into them, some garlic, and aren't these great? I guess these are for ice cream. Um, got the logo and everything, right on. Or they're hats for very, very small people. <laughs> What do you call somebody who lives in Rochester? A Rochesterian? Woo! Oh. It's a good thing I'm a nice guy. Insulting the fair city of Rochester. <laughs> and then so it's just a mix of, of, of fresh garden beans and the black beans. And then we're just gonna dress it with a little vinaigrette. And you know, a lot of people get all fussy with the whisk and make sure it's all emulsified, but it really doesn't matter that much. Let's squirt about a tablespoon of Dijon vinegar and look to get approximately, what, what am I saying here? About a quarter cup red wine vinegar, one of my favorite vinegars. You, um, if you watch Chopped, you'll hear the judges talk all the time about how they want their food to have some acidity in it. And if there's one, it's a really useful thing to learn about your cooking. The importance, vinegar, we grow up thinking that vinegar is something we, we don't like, we don't like the smell of it, but it's so crucial to making food good. You make a pot of chili, at the end put a couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar in there, it gives you tanginess, it gives you brightness. Thank you, am I getting, do I look warm? I am warm, can I tell you? Uh, you get that, you get that tanginess also from uh, lemon juice or lime juice. I'm losing my mic. Okay. So uh, acidity really important, and it's just that brightness. You, you also get acidity from other things, like um, there's acidity in the mustard because there's there's uh, there's also vinegar in there. Um, really. Uh, something to watch while you're cooking, especially if you're making something that, that cooks for a while, like a tomato sauce for pasta. Splash a little vinegar in there in the end, taste it. Always taste as you go. Taste for, I mean, you know, our friend Scott Conan comes up all the time because he likes to, he gets a little angry. Uh, you know how when you cook pasta, the recipe always tells you to use generously salted water, but they don't tell you how generous because they don't know how big your pot is, I guess. Um, a good, and this is gonna surprise you perhaps, unless you're Italian, in which case you might know. The water that you cook pasta in, take, take your spoon, blow on it, dip it in there and taste the water. It should be just as salty as chicken soup, which is very salty. Is that true? Very salty. That's the correct way to do it. Uh, now, if you have a heart condition, you may have another approach that you need to take. But uh, if you really want to improve your pasta cooking, try that. Taste the water and, and season it. And I'm trying, it could be a half a cup of salt. Um, the issues that we have with sodium have nothing to do with the home cooking that you guys are doing. It's, that's, it's from processed food, it's from canned food, it's from fast food. Those are the places where we're getting our obesity problem and our sodium problem, not from fresh made salads and pasta at home. Uh, let's see, so one quarter cup red wine vinegar, and three quarters, of, three quarters cups of what Rachel Ray would call EVOO. Extra virgin olive oil. One of the greatest things there is in food. Yum. Yummo, as she says. Where'd my salt go? Here we go. And uh, I mean, I like salt a lot, so I... Now the fly, you know what? I put the vinegar on there and the flies all went away. Anybody have any other questions? The question was, uh, are we going to once again uh, turn the tables on our judges and have the judges cook on chops? Um, yeah. Yeah, I was there. It was awesome. Um, <laughs> I, I got a couple of secrets that I wish I could tell you, but I can't. I will say this. So you've seen the previous episodes where, where our judges actually cooked. You know, I know Ann Burrell has been here before. She's a genius. Uh, she's ferocious. 
Um, man, I, lo I love it when the judges cook because you really see the incredible difference in skill between somebody like Robert Irvine, Marcus Samuelson, Mark Murphy, Alex Rinoschelli, Ann Burrell, the Iron Chefs, Michael Simon, who I saw two days ago. Uh, I also ran into Nadia G from Kitchen Kitchen. It was really cool. She's crazy, but she's cool. Those people have a skill level that, uh, that most of us will never understand. <laughs> Myself included. I'm not, you can see, you know, I'm comfortable enough up here, but I'm not fast like that. And I'm not taking my neck and going, bang, 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 bang. Uh, I, 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 I would love to take six months off and, or a year and go to culinary school, preferably in Tuscany, or perhaps Provence, but uh, Food Network won't leave me alone. So, you know, this, a salad like this is, one thing I really love when I'm having a lot of people over is a couple of room temperature salads, things that you can make ahead of time, they only get better if they sit around. Um, and you don't have to chill them, really. You know, I mean, if it's overnight, you do. But for an afternoon, you don't have to chill them, you don't have to heat them, you just put plastic wrap over them to keep these flies out of them, and you're good to go. Um, you could add almost any vegetable to this, and it would be delicious. Now what have I failed to do so far that I keep telling everybody to always do? Taste. You guys are good. So, and I'm tasting, this is just the kind of, yeah, I'll watch for the flies, exactly. <laughs> Something buzzing in my mouth. So I'm tasting for acid, tasting for salt. Just a little more vinegar, salt, salt's good. And you know, I would love to, I would love to serve this to you, but for some reason I get the feeling you're not going to want it. It's just, a, it's just a concept. Oh yeah, sure. So you know how people make three bean salads? By the time the beans are in your mouth, you really can't tell the difference between them, but it looks nice. I'm sorry for talking with my mouth full. So try them. Um, both of these recipes are in the book. Um, they're also the kind of recipes that you can almost just sort of remember. They're simple. And that's the, the, rest, the sort of recipes that I like to, to show. I went over a little bit, um, but kickoff isn't for another hour and a half. So uh, why don't I see if why don't I take just a couple more questions and then I'll run back there and let them strike the set and we can get on to the business of defacing literature. Yes, sir. Would blue agave 